Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, coworker did not accept my help because she thought she was better than me, but later she was humiliated in front of all visitors. The second story, neighbor called the cops without speaking to me, so I started making noise even louder. The third story, Manager said not to work without his instructions, and after that he went on vacation for three weeks. We didn't do anything. On to the first story. You want to handle the rush hour alone? Be my guest. So this happened in 2018 when I was working at a KFC outlet in the UK. Anybody who's worked fast food knows that there are times when the rush hour gets really hectic, especially if your franchise is on a busy street. I worked at this place on the weekends because it was the busiest time for the store and the only time I could take out from uni studies. At our busiest we dealt with about a thousand customers in a 12 hour workday, with about half of them being in these rush hour slots. I was part of the front of house staff, which meant my job was to take orders, deal with and listen to the customers questions and complaints, pack their orders, make ice creams and shakes, and hand them out as well. At any given time I was doing one, two or all these jobs together. Since we would get so busy, we had always aimed to have about two people on the registers, two people packing, and one person specifically for handing out the orders by calling out the order number on the receipt. The handing out the orders job was the easiest part, and involved literally just standing there, which is why most of our staff used to work that station when they were tired, myself included. Fast forward to four months into the job, and one of our old staff members, we'll call her Lisa, comes back to join the team again. She had been working there before I had joined, and so knew everyone beforehand. She was also kind of pretty, and this will be important later. Now, before I proceed, I want to say that none of my coworkers had any issues with me and that my boss loved my work. I was so well received at this job that when I left they gifted me a guitar as a going away present. I had good English and I'm very friendly, so I was immediately settled in. My coworkers even playfully nicknamed me Skinny and joked around with me all the time. However, Lisa didn't like that because she could see that I was the center of attention due to my hyper energy. One fine Saturday I go into work and realize that I've been made responsible for the part of the front of house process, which is to yell out order numbers and give the customers their food, dealing with anything that might be wrong or missing. Fair enough, I had a really busy Friday and was hoping for something easy to do. I spent the first six hours of my shift doing this job and after the staff for the first half of the day left, I decided to help the remaining staff out until our coworkers for the second half of the day came in. In comes Lisa for the second half of the day and she's been made responsible for packing the orders, which is probably the most taxing job. This part of the workflow is so taxing that it always has at least two people handling that station. We were short staffed that day and so Lisa was tasked to do this job alone, which was probably not the best decision by my manager. However, since she had worked here before he trusted her to get the job done, we also had a rotation for our jobs, and it was her turn to handle that section that day. As if by some stroke of luck, rush hour started right as she came in, so she didn't even have time to prepare herself. What's even funnier is that she came in with a bad mood, so she definitely didn't want to work that day. Now, one important detail here is that we have a large screen right above the packing section that the customers can see, which displays their orders with details of their order and the order number displayed on it. Customers can have a look at that and be patient as they wait for their orders to be rolled out. Once an order is successfully completed, the order disappears from the screen, allowing the rest of the orders to be bumped up the priority list. This screen also had a timer on each order, which should under no circumstances be allowed to go over 7 minutes. If that happened, the timer runs red, alerting us to work faster. Usually this screen is not supposed to go beyond 7 orders at a time, but it has enough functionality to display up to 15 orders. Now, Lisa was trying her best, but as the rush hour increased, the amount of orders waiting went up exponentially and the customers started to line up. The screen went beyond 15 orders, waiting with red plastered all over it, and at this point it was obvious Lisa couldn't handle the packing section alone. One of my coworkers nudged me to go and help her out, since I was basically doing the easiest job just standing around. I decided this was for the best, and so I walked up and started packing orders next to her. As I did so, she stopped doing the packing, looked at me dead in the eyes and with the most threatening look said, go to your own job. I tried to be nice as usual and explained to her kindly how crowded it was getting, but it was obvious that she didn't want to listen. Not wanting business to be affected, I decided to go alert my manager, but just as I was about to go ask him for some advice, she says in the most condescending tone, I don't know why you're trying so hard to work next to me, but it's honestly creepy and you should stop. Now, I will admit, I'm an average looking guy, 
Definitely not in her league, but she was under some sort of misconception that I had somehow developed feelings for her. She was probably used to guys running after her and placed me in the same row without even getting to know me, which I found incredibly disrespectful. When I realized she was thinking I was some sort of simp, all my will to want to help her flew right out the window. I casually walked back to my station and grinned, knowing what was about to unfold. In the next 30 minutes, the screen was now full with about 40 orders waiting. In fact, there were so many orders waiting that you couldn't even see half of them on the screen because they were so down on the list. Customers were standing around disgruntled and hungry, looking at Lisa as she was panicking, running around trying to do everything by herself. My coworkers had seen how she had treated me, and so none of them approached to help her out. She was all over the place with the orders, chucking the bags in the air towards me, dropping fries on the floor, missing items and the customers were complaining to high heaven at this shoddy service. I mean, even by fast food standards, this was bad. Since I was the one handing out the orders, I was hearing all the complaints and trying to sedate the customers as much as possible, with the biggest smile on my face. It was pretty bad, and the only time I had ever had fun listening to people complain. What made it better was that the customers knew I wasn't to blame, and so we silently judged Lisa together as we watched her run around in a frenzy. Making casual trips to the back, as Lisa was visibly shedding her hair out of stress, was the best part, because I was just doing my job, whilst Lisa was halting the entire business by herself. Lisa just dropped some fries on the floor. We're gonna need a new batch. That burger that Lisa just sent out? She put in the wrong customer's bag and they've just come back demanding a refund. A customer's complaining that the food is cold and wants a fresh burger. The thing is, the back of house staff were doing all their work on time, so cold food and the like was not their problem. But because Lisa was messing up, they had to follow and remake the food, which meant wasting materials and also a bad mood, as they had to work extra for no reason. That's when my assistant manager, whom I was really good friends with, ran out to the front befuddled and asked me in a concerned voice, what's going on? Why aren't you helping her out? I explained casually what Lisa had told me after I had tried really hard to help, loud enough so that the customers could hear, and you could tell by the look on my manager's face that this wasn't his first rodeo with Lisa. Dejectedly and quietly, he turned around and started helping Lisa to pack, without saying another word to me. What made it even sweeter was that after about five minutes, another senior member of staff came to the front and chucked Lisa out of her station and towards the back of house staff because she was being such a hindrance. In about 10 minutes, all orders were cleared and the dust had settled. I was then tasked with handling the packing because I was the fastest at doing it, whilst Lisa had to prep burgers in the back over the smoldering heat of the fryer, which probably melted all of her makeup off her pretty little face. Imagining all the SH she was getting from the manager and the embarrassment she had just faced in front of an entire crowd of people was probably the most satisfying feeling I ever had. Not because I was happy she was struggling, but because I got back at her for thinking I was below her, just because she was a little bit better looking than I was. And the cherry on top was the fact that she had asked for this all by herself. Justice served, but the orders weren't, haha. <laughs> at one point I even walked to the back to see how she was doing. I found her hunched over the fryer and couldn't tell if what was rolling down her face was sweat or tears. However, the look in her eyes was the most delicious treat ever. Needless to say, Lisa never worked the packing section alone again and tried her best to get along with me after the fact. But I never helped her of my own volition unless she specifically asked me to. I didn't want her to feel creeped out after all. The next story is… So you want strict adherence to the city bylaws? You got it, neighbor. This compliance is ongoing and will be for the foreseeable future. So I pulled out my gas-powered pressure washer this past weekend for the first time in three years, figured it was well past time to do some property cleanup. Started at 11 a.m. on Saturday morning, as I didn't want to start too early out of respect for my neighbors. Knocked off around four with a couple of breaks in between. Got the back and both sides of the house done. Lot of concrete patio. Figured I can finish the front driveway and retaining wall the next day. Fired it up on Sunday at 11 a.m. and got to work for an hour so broke for lunch, then back at it at 1. Maybe an hour or so later I'm interrupted by the city bylaw enforcement officer, who's responding to a noise complaint. Apparently there's a bylaw that prohibits power equipment on Sundays. Hmm, okay, I had no idea. Just a warning, no ticket. The guy was actually very nice. I'm a bit annoyed that my neighbors called bylaw on me without at least coming to talk to me first, but okay. At this point, there's a huge mess all over the end of my driveway, the sidewalk and the street. So I asked the officer, is it okay if I quickly take five minutes to clean the mess up and push it all together? He says, sure, no problem. And I quickly start cleaning up. Cue not one, but two of my old geezer neighbors to come running out of their houses to attack the poor bylaw kid. A minute later, he comes back and says, sorry, you need to shut down now. Okay, he's just doing his job, but now I'm peeved. 
I've lived here for eight years and none of these old a-holes have ever even said hello to me or my family. So I get the details of the exact bylaw. Nothing on Sunday. Saturday 9 to 5. Should have started earlier. Monday to Friday 7 to 7. As he's leaving I call out very loudly to him. Not really to him. So just so I'm clear, 7 a.m. Monday morning is a-okay. Bright and early at the stroke of 7 a.m. Monday morning, I put an hour of pressure washing before work. Tuesday morning another bright and early start. Wednesday session was truly awesome. Who should stop by this morning while I was working on my retaining wall and sidewalk but my neighbor Baldy McBylaw caller. I gave him a friendly wave and a neighborly good morning and continued with my work until I ran out of gas. He hung around for a while glaring unhappily at me but must have realized that there was really nothing he could do about this situation he had caused. He slunk away a few minutes later. I'm running out of things to pressure wash, but my other neighbors let me know I can borrow his grinder so I can finally get rid of that piece of rebar sticking out of the concrete at the side of my house. Sunday, today, and tomorrow is a holiday, so I guess it'll have to wait until Tuesday at 7 a.m. The last story is, don't work until I show you how to do it properly. Background. I work maintenance in a school board, and every summer we bust our butts using heavy machines to scrub the top layer of dirty, damaged wax off the classroom floors and then reapplying fresh wax. For most schools, this is a full summer job, working full shifts from the time the kids leave until they return to get everything done. Each school has a head of maintenance, and each group of schools, one high school and five to ten elementary schools, has a supervisor of maintenance. Now on to the malicious compliance. Supervisor was a bit of a jerk, who thought he knew the best way to do every job. If he didn't like you, or felt a perceived slight from you, he was vindictive too. Well, the week before the summer break began, he calls all the maintenance staff into a meeting, during which he informs them that no one is to do anything with the floors until I show them how to scrub and wax them properly. Fair, I guess. Some supervisors are weird about having specific methods they like seeing to get things done. Maybe his method is better than how we've been taught. Except directly after uttering this edict, supervisor goes on vacation for three weeks. Of course, not wanting to disobey him, the maintenance staff did exactly what they'd been instructed to. Nothing. About a week into this, the manager of maintenance, the supervisor's boss, showed up and was flabbergasted to find the maintenance team just sitting, with no work being done. When he asked them why the heck they weren't working, they told him what the supervisor had told them. Manager told them to go start working, and he would deal with supervisor. Supervisor was moved to a different school area after that. I hope you guys love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out.